This episode of Philly Fame TV is sponsored by Top Dog Law. Now y'all already know who to call for any accidents or injury cases. If you want that top dollar, you better get that top dog. You can hit him up on Instagram at Top Dog Law or visit his website www.topdoglaw.com. Yeah, welcome back to Philly Fame TV once again. Thank y'all for tuning in. This is your first time, you know, tapping in with us. Make sure y'all like, subscribe, you know, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff. You know, this episode, we're going to get into the, you know, what happened to Joey Jahad and where is he now. This story is strictly from my point of view, you know, my experiences with Joey Jahad, how I know him. And based on the interview I did with him back in 2017, we did like a two and a half hour long interview where we pretty much touched on everything. We addressed everything. I mean, he spoke his whole, pretty much his whole story for the most part. You know what I mean? So a lot of this going to be from Joey Jahad and his own words and from my point of view. Um, you know, I met Head, you know, early 2000s. You know, I fir- I first I heard of him, you know, back in the early 2000s, you know, in that era, people was running around battling and making their names. So I heard of him in the early 2000s, but I actually got cool with him, you know, a couple years later. You know, I briefly touch on this story, like I said, it's from my point of view. So, to, you know, early 2000s, 2002, I would say that's why I first heard of him. He had a gallery rap. He had a rap about the gallery, and he was running around battling people with that, John. So one of my folks had heard of, heard the rap. I ain't actually heard it myself, but one of my first folks must have heard of, heard him or heard of him and brought his name to my attention. I think we seen him went a place somewhere in the distance. He like, yes, the boy, the gallery rap. I mean, you need to battle him. You know, I was active doing my thing at the time. Then I seen him down club floor one day. We was down there doing our thing, you know. If you, those who are familiar with me, my background, you know, I ain't gotta get too deep into that. But y'all, y'all know, y'all know. If you know, you know. Like we was down there getting active, and I seen him down there too. Like so after that, shortly after that, um, I still ain't hearing rap yet. I just seen him around and heard of him. And, uh, you know, my bro Face, he was filming for the Bananas DVD and had he filmed the Cipher with. Um, this when Cicero was first coming at Cassidy outside of Club Flow, him and Rico went in and out. That spinach had j- jumped in it, and I mean my man Nick Rock, uh, and then Joey Jahead, he had hopped in it. So it was a big ass cipher out front of Club Flow. Hollow Man was out there, but I don't think he rapped in that John. Uh so when the, when we actually about to put the DVD out, that's when I first heard Head Rap in that cipher on our DVD. And I mean he killed it and I started fucking with him Vince, though he was nice and he was on our DVD. Up the block, the stuff in his They dug in one time. Probably ain't hurt. I'm the kid with the punchline. Top five. Dead or alive. Find the other side. Falling like a nigga with a sick handle. So them bitches, they blow me like trick handles. You hurt, I got bitter. So you're stripping danger. My blood boiling from a different angle. Like I spit. And after you hit, I don't switch the banger. My gun dirty ringworms on my trigger finger. I'm just screaming. I'm strapped and I clap for So when I fall, you get shot like a black. So a couple years later, you know, we filmed another joint. That's when me and Hat actually built the rapport. So say the DVD we filmed in 2002, it came out like 2003, 2004. We filmed the next joint like 2006. So that's when me and Hat actually got cool. Before that, we knew each other, knew of each other, came across paths. I mean, and stuff like that. But we got cool like 2006. So I knew him ever since then. And ever since then, you know, every time we did a DVD, did any type of content, Head was pretty much a part of it for the most part. I mean, and all the way up to current time with Philly Fame TV, I mean, doing the interview with him, you know, like I said, in 2017. So Head been my guy throughout. So, you know, this 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 uh, episode kind of, you know, hit a little different. That's my guy. And I'm a t- I got plenty of Head stories, you know what I mean? But we're going to get into his actual, you know, a little bit of his background and his story, you know what I mean? So before he was Joey Jahead, his name was Skinny Joey. He was running by Skinny Joey, you know, like Joey Moline, know the my boss, Philadelphia, you know what I mean? So early on, and it's, you know, before he even got into rapping, you know, he from North Philly, you know, people know him from Delhi and Dolphin. And uh, at 14 years old, his mom, 14, 15, his mom passed away from cancer. 
So that was, you know, a, a, a pivotal point in his life. Now, I mean, obviously tragic for anybody, you know, any young man or any young person to lose their mom at a young age or at all in general. Know what I mean, so especially at a young age. So he ended up, you know, a lot of his family ended up moving to California after his mom died. And I don't know. So he was out there for a little minute. And he said, he said out there, that's when he started, like, playing around with rap, like rapping other people's stuff while y'all there. So y'all in California rapping some of the people from the local people from the neighborhood raps out there, you know what I mean? Acting like it was his and he was able to, you know, get it off to where though he felt like he could rap. And the way they was feeling it motivated him a little bit. So he said he go back um to the city, his grandma, you know, most of his family was out of California, but his grandma still was in the city down high off and she opened the doors up to him, said he could come stay with her if he wanted to come back to Philly because he was homesick. So he ended up moving back with his grandma, Del Hondorf, and more, like I said, most of his family in California. Then he said a lot of his dad's side, so his mom's side of California, he said a lot of his dad's side moved to Williamsport. So, you know, it's mainly just him and his grandma in the, in the city on Del Hondorf. He said he used to have like nightmares, wake up out nightmares, going through it about his mom and stuff dying. He said his grandma told him to start writing, like writing poetry, writing scriptures out the Bible, stuff like that, just start writing. He said he started playing around with it, you know, turn it into poems, and that's how he kind of started writing raps. Then at the time, he going to Strawberry Mansion High School. I mean, you know, Strawberry Mansion, legendary high school in the city, especially back in those days, the basketball team, and even just the people that went there, you know, he had... Uh, uh, he said Meek, Meek had went there. Meek was younger than he know, but he said he knew Meek from Mansion. Um, Diamond District, some of they, I mean, some of they peoples, you know, they was lit at the time back north. Lotto, Black Flame, and all them, Ken Rock. They was, some of they, was, some of they um, members was going to uh, Mansion at the time, and some of them used to camp outside after after school and all that. So, had he said he was going to school. He wasn't rapping yet, but he was trying to get his feet wet. He ended up battling Ken Rock because he felt like Ken Rock was the best in Diamond District at the time. I started writing shit. Niggas started telling me I was hot right away. I started calling myself Skinny Joey. This after Skinny Joey Molino get booked with the mob and all that shit. I was already bone skinny and my name was Joey. I was Skinny Joey. That's what it was. So, I started getting hot. And I'm going to say by the time I 18, 19. It was off to the races. I was hunting niggas down. I go to school. The first year I go to mansion. I'm going to night school. No, I was going to day school at this time. Dynamite and all them in there with me. So Marzi killed that shit. Diamond District was hot as fuck. Technique and all them in there. Like, well, I know Black Fame and them, they used to be waiting outside. They all had their Diamond District jackets and all that. I'm like, damn, the district hot as shit. I said, next year when I come to school, I'm right at everybody. Like, I'm talking about, like, I got to get noticed with this shit. So the hottest person to me was Ken Rock at the time. So we on, oh, no, we on, we on Silver Street. I'm on Silver Street with Ronnie and Mikel. They got Rock around there. When Rock come through, I'm like, yo, I'm about to battle him. I go right at him. So he was hollering at me too. But I stood my ground like he ain't get out on me. He was saying some shit. I knew the rap though. So anytime I knew the rap, I was never no hater. I just say that shit right with you. So he started rapping, I started rapping. He was like, oh, you nice. I mean, you should come fuck with the district and all that shit. Like he was telling me I could come and fuck with them. And I'm like, no, I'm cool. I'm on the other side with it. But like, y'all doing y'all thing. So the main thing was I ain't had no team, but I wanted to make my own team. And then I didn't want to be in the back. So my thing was, I'm going to get, I still got to get high. Hell no, I only got three raps. So I got three joints. The summer come, after the summer over, I come back, I got 15 raps and I won it with everybody. I mean, he was around here in the battle in Ken Rock. I mean, him and Ken Rock got cool. Ken Rock cool signed. He basically let him know he was nice and all that. So he had ready. I mean, he said he had a couple raps at the time. He wasn't looted yet. Then he started getting more reps. And I mean, he started getting more cocky, more battles. I mean, and the battle in NH early on, they both, you know, touched on their battle. Good battle. Then they end up getting cool. I mean, I, see, a lot of niggas I went fishing for, I caught their ass, too. I battled Hattie. I battled Quilly. Yeah, I, a lot of them motherfuckers I went fishing for, I, I found the ass. So that's how you met, you ain't know him before that, that's how you kind of met him, like, because I know you and Hand was cool, I mean, y'all was cool back then, like, y'all did music together early on and stuff like that. Battle, 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 man, battle, I just respected his, just respected his hand, I mean, so, I come up there, I'm with Dynamite. Dynamite out there. He like, I got whatever on my guy. I got whatever on. You talking about the boxers? Dynamite? Yeah. 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 So I'm out there, Dynamite. I don't know if Shark was out there, too. So, NH out there. I'm motherfucking Wesley Snipes, white man can't jump in, niggas. This is what I was doing. I used to rip player everybody. So, 
you know, replay, he get in the corner, act like he's bitching and all that, then woo, he chop you on your neck, it's on and popping, he get the shit, he get the show on the road. I'm faking like I can't rap and freestyle, and they like, yo, we about whatever, we got this on eight. Damn, like, I got whatever on my man, uh, uh, so I freestyle some bullshit. They like, eight, you better bite his fucking head off. Soon as you, eight, go right at this nigga, he corny as fuck. I'm just laughing like, they don't even know. I'm something else, like, you feel what I'm saying? So H say some shit, he go the fuck off. I'm like, damn, he hot as shit. I go right in. Jad, I'm the bull with the wool on his hip. When it rides, it can stir fry, boy, with your shit. Ooh, I get the job done, boy, with a brick. I'm the one with the side young, boy, I can pitch. H knew who I was. He said, oh shit, you the boy Joey Jahad. Look, we, so the battle going on, we step to the side and start chopping it, but we supposed to be rapping. I chill in the middle of my rap. I'm chopping, yo, get my, get my handle and all that shit. I think we had house phones at this time. I don't know if we probably did. So I don't think it was cell phones yet. I know I gave him my number. Yo, we gonna get together. Let's finish the battle, though. So he get my number, we get each other's number. We go, we battle. We go at each other. We go three rounds. <laughs> so, you know, after the battle, Dynamite and them, like, he was like, he was like, he was behind whatever I was doing. Like, to this day, he would fuck with whatever I'm doing. If I say I'm doing something, he's coming out for the, for the guy. If I tell Sharp, he's coming out for the guy. So, after me and eighth battle right there, it was like a, I don't know, we won one or two or three rounds or whatever it was. I had way more, I had a lot of raps at this time, but I was the shit. So, I get his handle. So, you know, it was like a crowd doing whoever, they could say whoever won, won. His guys thought he won. I know I thought I won. I know he thought he won. But he knew I was the shit. I knew he was the shit. I get his number. We link up after that. He become a go-getter. Because I just started this go-getter shit. So it's me. It's NH. I battled Quill the same kind of way. Get Quill. D. Jones wasn't a rapper. He just was my hype man. And my little brother. And I was teaching him how to rap and shit like that. And eventually, at some point in time, and I think he said, and was a go getter. I mean, at some point he started, he ain't started go getters yet, but eventually when he started go getters, you know, NH was fucking with him early on. Her man Quill, he said, battle Quill early on too. So at some point, he just, once he got his reps up and he, you know, we come from the era where you want to make your name, you want to show how hot you is, you go battle whoever hot. So he was just battling whoever, just like everybody else was. You know, everybody was running around bad on people, but had definitely was, you know, a lot of the interviews that I did with people and they was talking about that era. Like, he definitely was talking about had pulling up on them and all that. Like, had was hunting people down. He was getting cool with people at the same time. So, he mentioned he battled, like I say, battle NH, battle Quill, say battle Vodka, battle Cicero. <laughs> he, like, he battled a lot of people. Quite sure I'm missing some people, but, yeah. you know, Another battle he did too that 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 kind of uh, connected me to head early on because he battled Hollow, he battled H down dances. So I knew about that. I wasn't there that day, but I definitely heard about that. And I mean, Hollow told the story about that. You know, when that shit came out, and you know, you know, I, I battled Ness. You know, Hollow man buzzing now. Everybody wanna, you know, everybody wanna come around. Everybody wanna piece of H man. You feel me? So, you know, um, Hattie was one of them guys. He was real persistent. He used to come around all the time, like, damn, you hot, you know what I mean? I just want to get it in with you one time. He wanted to battle, you know what I mean? He wanted some, he wanted some of that light, too. So, you know, we uh, we got it in in front of dancers. Yeah, Hattie remember that. <laughs> Hattie remember that. We got it in front of dancers. That shit was fun, too. You know, because he used to always come around. Come on, you know, he used to start rapping. We used to be over here smoking. He used to start rapping, directing his raps towards me. Come on, cuz, you ready for this? <laughs> he brought me over, come on, cuz, you, you, you know what I mean? So one day, he drew a crowd. You know, he made it like a big thing at dances. And I couldn't, I couldn't deny it. Then I said, you know what? Come on with it. And then, you know, we got it in. The crowd was so crazy, you know. Every time I gave him a bar, the crowd was so loud. I couldn't even finish my verses and shit, so I had to whisper it to him. Hey, you know, you remember what I whispered in your ear. <laughs> and at that time, like I said, Hollow was the guy, you know what I mean? Like... A lot of people was trying to get at him. A lot of people wanted a piece of me, but you know, and Head was hungry, and I gave him his credit. He said, matter of fact, Head said he battled the whole chief, battled multiple chases, but Hollow, I think it turned into him and Hollow at some point in the time. You know, Hollow said he whispered like like the last John or or, or part of his verse. He said he whispered the Head air like because it was so crazy outside. And yeah, so that that made me respect him because not a lot of people could stand in front of each. You know what I mean? Like. 
So H respected him, but I believe H definitely got over on him. I wasn't there even there, but I know head was nice, but he wasn't on H level at that time. Like I mean, like so I know H probably definitely got him on that joint. But but you know, like a lot of people got stories about bad on head. So from his perspective, he after he battled Ken Rock, battled in H, battled Quill. You know, at some point in time, he decided to form the Go Getters. Now he know D Jones from the block. D Jones, they from the same block. I mean, Del High Dolphin. But D Jones wasn't a rapper yet, so D Jones was just like, "Hey, hype man, he fuck with head." Now I mean, he think he thought head was one of the best rappers, so he used to support head, hold him down. Now I mean, go to battles with him and you know ad lib and you know do all that type of shit, so it made his battle more hyper. And I mean, like head just had that shit from the rip. He was hot as shit. Um, we, was, we was fucking with each other. We was from the same hood. And man, niggas just he start bad when niggas like he start bad when everybody. And then that's when his name start jumping. And, um, and other motherfuckers was coming around, and then that shit just clicked up. Like, and that DVD era shit started running, when Bob started running with all that shit. And that shit was supposed to be a battle, but it just didn't happen. It was supposed to be like the like go get us versus the blood have. But then Bob's, and you know, all let's just do a drink together. And then that, that's how that shit played out after that. So that's how they had their little crew going initially, and then once Quill and them was around, you know, they was the go getters rap rap club. Now he already knew Meek, like he said from Mitch, and I don't think they rap together, did no music or nothing like that. But they knew each other, they was familiar with each other. I don't know if they battled or anything before that. They may have. I don't, I don't know. I don't remember if he mentioned that or not. But uh, I have to believe Meek already. They already knew Young Bob. So I think Meek was cool with Young Bob. He already because Young Bob started off doing mixtapes first. He went doing DVDs. He had shot DVD at first. He was like doing mixtapes, like taking songs from different artists, some people in the industry, some underground people, and putting mixtapes out and, and moving them like that. And I think Meek might have got on his mixtape early somehow. Like they might have had Meek songs on his mixtape, if I ain't mistaken. Yeah, you know what? Had they used to be down there. Had Had was down there, and uh, Jones was his hype man, D Jones. But mind you, Had and Meek knew each other. So uh, as Meek rolling, had uh, pull Meek to the side like, damn, I see you rolling on them headshot mixtapes. Introduce me to Bob. So uh, so had he asked Meek to introduce Hattie to you? Yeah, like yeah, introduce y'all yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, asking that, you know, introduce him to me or whatsoever. And Meek had called me like, yo, uh, the boy Joey's a hat. He want. Uh, he want you know, link with you. He want, he want to give you some music whatsoever. So I'm like, all right, get my number. You know, let me out. Had wanted to get on the mixtape. And he knew Meek was, you know, connected with Bob or knew Bob. Because, you know, they's from the same hood. They all from North. But Meek and Bob was from more closer together. They from pretty much a couple blocks apart. So Meek already knew Bob. And Had already knew Meek. And Meek wanted to, I mean, Had wanted to get on with Bob. So I think Had went through Meek and kind of, you know, tried to get through Bob. And that's kind of how that happened. And uh, long story short, far as that, Bob ended up, you know, forming headshots at some point in time. You know, he ended up having bloodhounds with Meek and them a part of it. And then had, once he formed the go-getters, you know, he had them a part of it. And they was doing their thing, and that's how a lot of people came to know Had at some point in time, too. Because early on, Had went on no DVDs, then he got on Bananas DVD, then he was on a, a couple DVDs, too. I think he was on, um, nah, I think, I know he was on Big Star, Too Far For The Streets, like, they last couple DVDs before Star, you know, Star Day. already heard that I'm moving pies, got nicks, got dimes, got superfly, got chicks on the grind, like superfly. Me and Rap go together like a suit and tie. Who said I ain't hot, nigga, he poop and die. Cause every bar off the wall like suicide. Yeah. I do ride and I'ma ride till you got I was going, the case spray and make it feel like the shower warm. It's on Heavy Spitters DVD, and then he got on the headshots. I mean, DVD situation, then became on the, like a, a main part of that, on the covers, on the mixtape, cover of the DVD, you know, and had became, you know, the, 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 the head that people knew him at that time. Like, he really came into his own, I believe. He already was who he was, he had a little name and all that. And a buzz, but that kind of took him a little bit to another level. All of them, while all of them being on that situation together, moving together, you know. So he in the headshot situation. I mean, they doing their thing. I mean, uh, at some point, you know, Oskino, they link up with Oskino, and 
Oskino start showing him love, doing stuff with him and all that, and taking him places and looking out for him, like like he said he did. Like I mean, Oskino, I mean, made it known, but he telling the truth when he said that, like he was. I mean, messing with him, had Meek and all of them at the time. He did the drum with Beans. I mean, he did the freestyle with Beans in front of Beans. Beans was you know fucking with head heavy. I mean, you know a big part of head story, you know, was the. Uh, the Touch Money Top Class Beef. I mean, when he was going at it with them. I mean, when, when Headshots was going at it with them, Head was a major part of that situation. It started with, you know, the Frank with the Grippers John situation. like, And then it went from him to him going at it with Reed. Like. So, I ain't had nothing against none of them. Like Frankie, Reed, none of them. But my main thing was this. Like, I don't want to say some shit that it's going to be, first of all, if you tough, you're not going to let nobody say nothing with your name that's remotely close to being nut shit. So if you a tough guy, you're going to say something. And I'm going to wait for you to bite because I'm going to say this. I wasn't going at dude. I just been talking shit. Like I always talk. I wasn't going at him. He went at me first. That's my main thing. Make you go at me first. So I did it. Like I did it. I said some, uh, I said hit the block. Get it on, get the rock and whip it corn. I had a fiends. Had a fiends teeth missing. Frank with the grip is going. I said some shit like that, like, cause he had missing teeth and I knew the world was gonna notice that the like the small world I was in at the time, cause I wasn't worried about like global shit. I was just worried about like local shit. I knew everybody know cause he killed the uh, nigga on the Philly versus Harrisburg and that's what we know. It's like, no, the boy with the teeth missing. Like, he hot as shit. You feel what I'm saying? So, I knew for a fact. I said, he be with Reed. He gonna either bite or Reed gonna bite. They gonna say something. So, Jones, my fat young boy, you know, Reed try to go at him. I don't like who the fuck pipe look like a fat ass turkey. I wanna slice you. Nobody likes you. You make me wanna fight you. Look like a fat ass turkey. I wanna slice you. I don't even know the reason I had him fight you. Just another one of my kids, I say goodnight to When he say that, I say, don't like, I don't worry about it. He thinks it's a game. He talking shit. He like, yo, you gotta get him. He said, Joe, I, I said, listen, no, chill. He hot as shit. Let me get him, Joe. You don't gotta go at him. I got it. Let me, I rock him to sleep. So, soon as he do that, no, but listen, before we get past that, look, I had one at Frank. When I, I, I didn't go at him for a throttle yet, I went at him after he, he go right at me. He said some shit. So they got, this one Reed got the little green hat on and he dissing D. Jones and Frank was dissing me. Cause I told D. Jones to diss Frank too after that. So when D. Jones went at him, Reed go at D. Jones hard as he possibly can. And then I jump on Reed and I get him. And like, that's how I started that shit. So he dropped the AAP and I dropped the get back. And, and he was strategic cause he spoke, he said he wanted to get in it. Like he ain't had no reason to, so he was trying find his way in so he like do some bait out there so they can come at him like that was his whole thing like he spoke on that too like his whole thing as far as all them beefs and battles and back and forth was you know him being strategic i mean throwing some bait out there so somebody could go at him and then he go at them like that was had was good for that i mean that's that was the that was the era like battling and going back and forth right that was that was the wave at the time so you know, he went at it with Frankie, then went at it with Reed, I mean, and that was a legendary back and forth jump. Then, you know, at some point in time, it got squashed with uh, Gil. Gil came in and, and you know, squashed it with uh, with Reed and Head, and then they were supposed to do a three, the Three Kings project. And it was supposed to be um, Reed, Head, and Gilly. Uh, Meek was in jail at the time, I believe. That's when Meek got booked. I mean, and uh, the project never happened. They did. They was at a party together. I think they did a party together, or they was at a part or a show or something like that. Cause they got pictures, you know, nightlife pictures with them three together and all that, showing that they squashed it, and they was all together at at some type of show or a party. And uh, they was supposed to do a project, but had said, uh, you know, people was acting Hollywood. Like, Reed had got signed with the Italians at the time. I mean, they had, you know, he had a budget behind him. He was the first artist from, you know, that DVD era to get a deal. So, it, and you know, had said he was kind of feeling himself. You know, had was lit, so had admitted that he was feeling himself. So, you know, they, they had, like, he said they had songs done, like seven or eight songs done. 
but they just never finished the project. It was hard to get everybody on the same page, hard to get everybody in the studio, like everybody was doing their own thing. So the project never happened. But as far as that beef that was that was squashed, like into that situation. Then, you know, another significant si event that happened, you know, was the situation where, you know, the, the viral video of him getting, you know, knocked out or whatever. And, you know, a lot of people say, you know, it was a narrative after that happened that, you know, that, that hurt his career, that ended his career, that was the end of his career. And he actually addressed that in the interview. Me and him talked about that because... You know, as we all know, after the knockout video happened, eventually had started dropping music again. He was back active and back doing this thing like you like like nothing happened. Like he was the people back supported him, so it actually didn't it didn't end him because he was still doing his thing after that. I mean, so had actually talked about that and addressed that, saying that you know, and actually said how that video actually helped him gain more fans. Uh, I want you to speak on this because we was talking off camera like yo. How crazy it was how you overcame one of the craziest situations that a lot of people counted you out and they think you could bounce back from and all that. The, the vid that went viral and all of that. Yeah. Before before the internet popped off the way it is now, like that was early on, early 2000s around that time or something like that. Yeah. So speak on like how you was able to overcome something like that and still able to bounce back and drop music and get busy and still get the love from the streets. It was, it was mainly because of some real shit. It was like, I just wasn't taking no for an answer and the shit that was happening after that was bigger than the other shit that I was ever doing. Like, you gotta remember, at this time, YouTube was like, new. There wasn't really no, like, I didn't know how to use YouTube, like, at all. Like, I ain't know nothing about that shit. I ain't know about how niggas monetize and doing all of this and that on YouTube. I just knew, because I think it was LimeWire. That's when niggas used to get my music off and shit. Like, I used to have LimeWire on Smash. But niggas was like, you gotta understand. Niggas was getting to see me, and then they was getting to notice, like, damn, um, yo, look at this, this what happened. So if you go on a, a subject and, and somebody telling you this, the curiosity in your brain will say, let me click this video under here too, though. So you click in the video under there, then you notice them. Damn, blow a nigga, yeah, 100 pounds soaking what? Hey, what, I'm wrong with him. He got snuck, that could have happened to anybody. Let me check this video out under here, though. Ooh, you, you check the video. Damn, he got this shit. I ain't wait a minute. That might have been a luck. Let me see something. Let me click this next one. Oh shit. Wait a minute, I'm gonna click one more joint. Boy, the best nigga I ever heard in my life on some real shit. Like all jokes aside, I don't give a fuck with nobody saying like fuck everything else. Bar for bar, that nigga is hot as fuck. And that's how that shit was, show. Just like that's what, so pretty much I asked him like how was he able to overcome that? And one of the things he said was it was people that pretty much never heard of him before that after they watched the knockout video, they clicked on the other videos of him rapping. I mean, so I'm pretty sure like his views and stuff went up on his over other videos. You know, he became a bigger name because this was viral before viral was a thing. This was early YouTube days. Like, I mean, a lot of that stuff didn't happen at this time. So it was new to people. So that video, I mean, it went around like. But that made him a bigger name and probably made people more interested in who he was and looked at his other videos and stuff. So after that, like I said, he had projects and I mean, he was back moving around, back shaking, doing his thing like like he was before. So and mind you, he was one of the top selling, if not the top selling um, artists in Philly at the time. Like people, the the mixtape era in, in, in Philly was crazy. Like people used to come from all different places to buy people from DVDs, music, they CDs and stuff, they go to Black and Noble, uh, 52nd Street, feasting them, up at Derby, Dan, Dan and them, 69th Street, uh, all these little places, man, like, nah, touch money, nah, that's when he had the hut, he had this, this hut on, in, in West Philly, it was a music store, that's where touch money and them used to be at, he used to be selling people mixtapes out of there, like, these people used to sell hundreds and thousands of people CDs, and Head was one of the top guys, if not the top guy at this time, selling CDs. So, Head had, had a crazy run with it before and after the knockout video. So, he addressed him bouncing back, saying, you know, like, 
I mean, like that that definitely didn't end. He was able to overcome that because he and he also said he was able to overcome that because of the other stuff in his life. I'm losing his mom as a kid and he talked about him getting jumped multiple times, like I mean, like even Buck I mean he went through with other rappers and shit. Bucks Bucks had a story he talked about I mean having his people's Rolled or had a head standing up for something I like, had ain't no sucker. Like, head was throwing it back, head was talking crazy. Like, I mean, well, like, you know, you, you heard Joey Jay. I, I, shout out to Joey. Listen, he, Joey Jay is, is, is a tough motherfucker. Yeah, shout out to head. Head is a tough motherfucker. Because this nigga, we, we rumbling. It, it's like he said, it's a, it's a million of us in here. You know me, I, I always 100 deep. So, and I'm still 100 deep. But, so when I, when I hit head, you know, a thousand niggas hit him, we got him, I'm on top of him, we getting him. And he the next day, the next day on DVD, tell me, I know you heard about my ride with my back against the wall. 30 niggas, 60 fists, no scratches, I'm a ball. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> damn! <laughs> I said, God hey, damn! Yo. You say you had that verse ready the next yeah, day? the next day they called me, said, you heard hey, this yo. shit? I said, yeah, I, said I got different. him on camera right there. Head was ahead of his time, bro. I said, I said, I said, listen, on the low, that's the only rival beef I had where I loved that nigga. Yeah. That nigga, like, far as, like, it's like, you, he kept me on my, all uh, right. Kept me on my toes. He tried. He tried to ignore me, but you know what I'm saying like, had he keep you on your toes? He was a hot nigga. He's a tough nigga. He wasn't no bitch, none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I give him that, man. Like, so had said like him being through, going through all of that stuff. Like, I mean, so the knockout video situation really w wasn't that big of a deal to him. Like, so that's how he was able to overcome it and keep keep it pushing. So you know, sometime after that, um. He had hosted a DVD we did, Bananas 3.5, Him and Quilly. That's when Him and Quilly, you know, go get us moving strong. And at this time, they was going through it with Meek. At this very time when, when we was doing this footage for this DVD. So I slide up on him, Him and Quill. Mind you, I, I wasn't getting them on the DVD or having them hosted just because they was going through it with Meek. And like I said, he was on multiple of our projects. Him and Quill, we had a report. With them, as we did with Meek too, because Meek was on, you know, our DVD too, or one of our D, one or two of our DVDs at this time too. So you know, we wasn't necessarily getting into that, but you know, this just was going on at the time. Like, so I slide up on them, made my man slide up on them. I mean, to get the footage, they down, they down north in this crib, him and Quilly, and they actually filming their own content at this time. They had Flame the Boss. They were doing little blogs and shit on YouTube, going at Meek at the time when I slide up on them. So they, they like, actively talk. Like, as soon as we walk in the room, they actively talking on somebody else's camera and shit. So, we, <laughs> so it's kind of crazy how when I walk in the jaw, they filming this shit, and they kind of, like, Start talking about me walking into your like, well, like put kind of like put me in it, like use me as an example, like. I mean, anyway. So we end up filming the footage, doing the DVD. I mean, it was crazy footage, crazy content. That was a crazy little time right there. I mean, me and Head was building, you know, for a minute. Like I was down there with them for a whole minute. They was pretty much just giving me the whole rundown of what was going on after we stopped filming and they situation with Meek and all those little beasts. Like, man, I had, I had plenty of conversations behind the camera and stuff like that. He was telling me about all this stuff and all that. But he ain't, he ain't take none of it serious. It was all, like, competition. He was going through real stuff at the time. Like, he, like, had the, he had, had was in the house with a bunch of his homies. Like, some of them, I mean, some of them was strapped. I mean, like, and they was worried about, you know, other issues and stuff they had that wasn't rap related at the time. I mean, so... That rap stuff was just like entertaining and all of that back and forth stuff for him for the most part. Now I mean, especially the stuff with with Meek. I mean, him and Quill going that Meek that ain't take none of that real serious. It was just like rap for real. So um, another interesting part of uh, um, uh, uh, Joey Jahead story: uh, Battle with Murder Moot. Now. You know, at the time, Murder Moot on uh, Smack, killing, killing it. I mean, a lot of people knew who he was. He doing this thing on the battle thing. And even to this day, like, I mean, he's still a battle legend. Like, I mean, like, but this one battle, I think, that's clear cut. I mean, if it, if no other junks, I ain't watch every single battle he did. I watched most of them. I think Party already gave him some work. I don't know if he won it, but I know Party already gave him some work. But most of the battles, Moot won. But this one junk that I think... It's clear cut that Mook loves. Like, head, head got over on him on this joint. Like, I mean, you could say I'm biased. I, I'm, I'm speaking from an unbiased point of view. I mean, from my opinion, like, I think head 
Smoke murder move in this joint. Like, kill me. Frown when they see me in the crown with the snap off hoodie, the guts brown like backyard boogie. <laughs> they gon' feel me. If a nigga talk rude, I spark dude and turn him into shark food. I hit this man, throw him in the river, man. Bitch, you say, Jay, walk away, be a bigger man. No, how many chances should I get this man? I squeeze triggers, full nickel, with the bigger blam. It'll hit the fan, talking that shit. I'm Jahadi, you shaggy, your dog is a bitch. Yeah. You ain't never seen me. That was a legendary battle. He said he came down Eighth and Diamond Playground. Um, old head Tino Brown from Philly. You know what I mean? He brought him down. And uh, he said he used to bring Murder Moose down. Like, Murder Moose would come to Philly with him sometimes uh, looking for people trying to battle. You know what I mean? Because that's, that's the era, like I said. So even niggas in New York was doing the same shit, moving around battling people. So even for him who had a name, he still was trying to battle people in Philly. Like, so you end up linking with Head, they do the battle. Like I said, Head get over on him, in my opinion. You know what I mean? So that was a nice little um, milestone in Head career and a nice little thing to put uh, join to put on his resume. Because like I said, Murder Mook a battle legend. After the battle with Mook, sometime after that, I mean, either after that or before that. By the way, at some point he had Lake with Kiss early on. I mean, and was and was hollering that kiss. I think he met up with him and Yonk, as he said, him and one of his homies had met up with him. Nah, I mean, they and they was they kiss was fucking with head. I mean, at some point in time, he had went out to Kali. This one sis was with game. He said he was out there with with game with sis and all that at one point in time. Then he said, um, so yeah, he met Kiss early on, and he said like he reconnected with him sometime later, like six years later. So this was after, probably after Murder Mook Bad on all that, he had reconnected with him. And uh, talked about, you know, doing a deal with him. Like he was supposed to do something with him. He wanted to do something with him, but it was some miscommunication because he was talking to Kiss and then somebody else was talking in the middle, I believe, or something like that. So it was some miscommunication with the situation, but he definitely was, you know, in tux with doing something with Kiss at the time. I think he said... He found out later on Kiss didn't sign him because he thought he signed with somebody else or something like that. So that's why he ain't never fuck with him. But yeah, so after the after all of that, you know, at some point in time, he said, I think this is why they was, after they was beefing or why. No, this was why they was beefing. So I skipped over this part. My bad. I skipped over this part. Why they was in the middle of the beefing with head. Um, headshots and touch money and all that. 50 Cent, that um, head came in and hollered that head. And I think he hollered that re, hollered that a couple people in the city. Hollered that, I think Magic still might have been a part of it. It was basically 50 Cent was trying to do a reality show based around, you know, them battling and beefing back and forth and all that. He wanted to involve everybody in it and, and I mean, get some and put money in people's pockets and, you know. And I think Head was actually offered the let I me mean, offer the deal out of this too. Maybe a couple of them probably was gonna get a deal out of this. But I know Head definitely was fucking with. I mean, I mean, Fifty was fucking with Head heavy. Like, and I definitely, I know he definitely wanted to do something with him. But he probably wanted to do something with him and all of them too. And because of you know different people' egos and pride or whatever the case may be, it didn't work. Out. You got niggas like 50 Cent, like, damn, they about to come to Del Hondo to pick me up. Like, wanna, yo, I come down into your motherfucking block and get you. I give you this motherfucking kind of check for this, and I give you this kind of check for that. Just turn yourself in. I give you this. You'll get a publishing deal for this. You'll get this and that. And that way, you'll be off the street. You'll get, like, a couple hundred grand or something. Like, I forgot how much money it was exactly just to chill. And he was going to do a reality TV show. Like, because they had this making the band shit out at the time. He was gonna do something real that was gonna be about the hood. It's just basically what they doing right now with the love and hip hop shit. It's like shit like that. He was gonna do it, but he was gonna do it with all the Philly niggas. And it was gonna be on some real shit though. But like, but 50 definitely was interested in doing something with, you know, the Philly artists at that time based on what was going on, with they back and forth and all of that. So, you know, and it was legendary, you know. Um, you know, the re had the AAP jaw, and then, you know, Joey Jahad had, had to get back. I mean, so, you know, that was a, a legendary situation with them too, far as music and, you know, freestyle versus back and forth. So, 50 definitely won their parts, but it didn't work out. At some point in time, um, you know, Head ended up having differences with headshots, you know, and he ended up, you know, 
um, going his separate ways from them or distancing himself from from them before going, you know, his own way totally from his perspective, you know, he wasn't able to to capitalize money wise the way he wanted to. He was trying to do certain things and he wasn't able to get in or whatever the case may be. Like I ain't gonna get too much into that, but you know, that's pretty much where where his gripe came in with them and why he started distancing himself from him according to him. I mean, like so and at this time, like I said, Meek was booked and then Meek was going through his little stuff with them too over the bell money and stuff like that. You know, we ain't gotta get too much into that, you know, that's well documented at that time as far as with them too spoke on at uh, the issues of at that time. So Head and Meek kinda, you know, they clicked up a little bit, was doing their thing together for a little bit of time. So Head fell out with his shots and then he kinda distanced himself from them and eventually he just pulled away from them and started doing his own thing, right? And that kinda led to, you know, a falling out with the other artists on his shots and they kind of started dissing each other and then it kind of that's where the, the rift between him and D Jones kind of come in because D Jones you know we ain't got to get too much into the situation but he felt like D Jones was or he said D Jones was in a video with them dissing him or something like that and you know like he felt some type of way about that and that's kind of where the discrepancy happened and you know, they went on a little back and forth situation, then they got cool again. I mean, he put that to the side. Eventually, they got cool again. You know, had went through it with a couple of artists over there. I mean, it was just music. They never got past that. It was just, you know, little back and forth shots, back and forth, nothing too crazy. But eventually, you know, all that got squashed. Like, and they was cool. Like I said, him and D. Jones got cool. You know what I mean, some time later. You know, like he had, had a lot of discrepancies and, and, and issues throughout his career. I mean, like you know, it's well documented. We talked, touched on, you know, uh, you know, him and D Jones situation. They got cool, then you know, eventually him and Meek went through it. I mean, he had they back and forth situation. You know, eventually him and Quilly had they back and forth situation. Like man, like. You know, he had a lot, of, I mean, a lot of stuff going on. He said he fell out with, he said he actually fell out with Quilly a few times, but you know, the last time was the the, the final time, you know, because I don't think they ever got cool since then, you know. We ain't got to get too much into those stories, so, you know, they, they would be forever talking about all of those different beefs and stuff he went through, like, but, you know, him and, him and Meek had their thing, and I don't think they ever got reconcile all the way and him and Quilly had their thing and I don't think it ever got reconciled all the way if, obviously I don't think it's no beef today if so long ago but I don't think they ever got cool not think we know they never got cool the way they was before like I mean it was a crazy little rift between them like and it got real messy like especially with him and Quilly because they were so close you know they they was running together at some point in time they was rapping together they I mean they was doing their thing like I mean like and just make you wonder too, like seeing fast forward a little bit and seeing how people careers went, like far as Quilly and Meek and all that, like just make you wonder, like damn, what if Quilly and Head would have stayed together? I mean, what if Quilly and Meek? I mean, what if Hattie and Meek was still cool? Like, I mean, like they they never had no issues and they was alright. Like, I mean, what if like? What could have been? What could what what had had what would have been with Hattie career? I mean, like crazy, right? So you know, another significant um part point ahead the head story. You know what I mean, it's all throughout. You know, a lot of these DVDs and stuff he was filming, a lot of music and stuff he was doing. Head was on a run. Like you know I mean, like I, I don't know exactly at what point in time he quit the case and started running from it. But he said, you know what I mean, at some point in time, like, he he caught this case. He thought he wasn't, you know what I mean, going to get a favorable outcome. He felt as though he was going to get a long amount of time, so he, he just ran. So he's still around, running around, doing his thing with the music, but then he'll go out of town for some time. He'll go here and there. He'll be laying low and so So he never could really go full throttle with the music because he had this hanging over his head. And this is what I think kind of, and even according to Head, this is what kind of derailed his career more so than the knockout. Because being as though he had this case hanging over his head 
And, you know, he felt as though he might get a long stretch of time by him being on the run. You can't really fully focus on music and fully go full throttle and do short. And I mean, be an active rapper the way you need to be, worrying about if the law going to catch you or not. And I mean, like, so that really, like, ultimately, you know, kind of messed him up for the most part. But in hindsight, he said, because when he eventually did get caught or whatever, or eventually went to jail, he only had to do like three years. So he said, in hindsight, if I knew I could have got three years, I mean, I would have just turned myself in and did the three years and could have just, you know, bounced back from there. So in hindsight, he seemed like, damn, that wasn't the right move. And that, that more so, I think, messed him up more so than a knockout video did. So eventually he did go to jail. He said he ran. He was on the run for like 10 years. I think he said like 120 months he was running before he eventually went to jail and served three years. He was in prison. Then he went to say he was in a boot camp program. I mean, so he ended up getting locked up like 2012. So at the end of 2012, going into 2013. And he came home in 2015, going into 2016 or something like that. He said, for the most part, he got a lot of love when he was in jail. He thought it was going to be opposite. But he said, for the most part, it was love. He was cool. Like, he had a couple people rocking with him, moving with him. I mean, so if he had any issues, he had a couple people that would, I mean, that would hold him down. So he said he was straight for the most part. So he said when he came home, early on in his transition was, was rough because he was in a halfway house. And the crib that he was supposed to go to wasn't ready, so he had to stay in the halfway house a little bit longer than he wanted to or needed to be. Then when he did get into an actual crib, he says, baby mom set him up with a crib and the crib wasn't right. So basically when he first came home, like he was trying to get back active in the music, but you know what I mean? He was going through that situation for his, his living situation. So that delayed him and held him back, you know what I mean? From getting back active. Then he said, when he did finally get settled, he dropped a, mon a freestyle to the monster beat. I mean, he dropped that freestyle, and then shortly after that, he catch he was in he get put on house arrest. And he said for the next thirteen months he was on house arrest on and off, like four months here, or three months there, stuff like that. So that kind of held him up. So. And then after that, he really got on more so with his kids. You know, he had got like six kids. I mean, before NBA young boy and all these rappers today with all these kids, like he had, it was early on to <laughs> be with, with multiple kids and all that. So he was holding his kids down for a period of time. So all of this going on when he first come home is the reason I think we never really seen Head get into the full swing and get back active today. And he did, you know, get in the mix a little bit here and there. Like, Greg G's had a challenge. I mean, he had a bunch of rappers jumping that John head, ended up jumping in that John. I mean, like I say, he did the interview with me. He talked about, you know, trying to get back into music right before we did the interview. He had sent me a song um, he did called Felonies. I mean, let me know he was getting back active. But I don't think he ever dropped the song. I don't think he ever officially put it out. Like, I mean... He did another little podcast I seen on YouTube with uh, Jumbo Beats. He did a joint with them. And uh, so this was off over the several years since he been home. This that's a couple little things that he done. And uh, you know the the situation with him and Sue Surf when they was going back and forth on live with uh, with Johnny Mac. Shout out to Mac. It was going back and forth on live, and then you know he started going back and forth on NH. Hey, hey, Jad, I asked you a question, Mr. Jad. You you not trying to battle rap, right? I could get off this live if it's not. Hey, hey, sir, somebody hey, sir, called hey, me. Sir, somebody sir, called sir. me and said jihad and surf. That's not what you was talking about, right? Hey, hey, no, I ain't, I ain't saying it, but surf is a method to oh, my right. madness. Send hey, me no, your no, number no, right no, now. Hey, me, no, send me, correct, send, send, send me, send me, me your number. Send me your number right now. That's all. Send me your number you right now. I see you, my. I see you, my number. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right I see you, my number. That's why I said, I said, who y'all want me to watch? Then they just start hitting no, you up. No, fuck that, fuck that hat. Because they know what like I do to you. Because just backed out of that shit. Because they know like, I do that to you. One bit. Huh? I don't like that shit. H, I'll be everybody on this live with me, H. And what, me and you what, in the same thing. Saying, that nigga just came at you on, like, that. Hey, yo, H, and, listen to so you. Like, hey, 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 because hey, I know right. niggas wasn't calling. Hey, niggas hey, don't get it. Niggas hey, don't really hey, want Candyman. They say it. They hey, say his name hey, in the mirror. No, I just, I don't like the way that looked at me. I mean, about battling and all of that, and you know, 
That was the last. I think I saw her from head for us on some rap type time, like right? since he been home. You know, at one point in time, he had posted that he was in school for I think welding or something like that. He was doing that. I mean, he posted little pictures and stuff here and there. Then he posted a little video, a couple of videos him on live, right, and listening to, you know, some of the music, some new music, some old music. So I mean, it showed that he might have had recorded some stuff and had some stuff done, but. He just never really put it out, never really dropped. Like so, he been home since 2016, 2015, 2016. We did the interview back in like September, late September, end of September 2017. We did the interview, and uh, so we in 20 early 2023 now. So over that period of time, like done little stuff here and there, but never really. I mean, put nothing out, never really went, I mean, never really jumped all the way back in, like, so, I mean, from what I can see, he been living life, chilling, I mean, taking care of his kids, whatever he doing, I mean, as far as, I don't know if he got a job or if he, you know what I mean, like, whatever he doing as far as that, like, if he's still in school, I don't know, like, but it appears like he chilling, like, he, man, like, and he cool, like, and he comfortable, and he at peace with it maybe one day he might jump back out in the music but over the last year since he's been home he ain't really been hit i mean like so but as long as he alive and well he he cool i mean like that's all that matter at the end of the day like so i guess i mean maybe he'll pop out one day and let people know why he ain't dropped man or why he ain't been active i mean like so maybe he'll do another interview. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll do another interview and he'll let people know, like, he jumping back in it or why he didn't jump back in it. But had one of them people that had, like, the charisma, the personality, the bars. I mean, he entertained them. Like, he one of them dudes that was entertaining. Like, he put the camera on at that time. Like, it was Gil, him, ARN, like, Quilly. Like, where you put the camera on them and they ain't got rap. They could just talk talk they talk and be entertaining and people will watch it like it had was definitely one of them people like but you know certain things happened that you know ultimately held him back from making it to that level and I think one of the major things was whatever the case was I'm thinking it was drug related or something like that you know had was in the mix for the most part outside of rap like had had was I mean yeah he was known to be outside doing what you do so I mean, I'm guessing it might have something to do with something of that nature. And he might have felt as though he was going to get way longer time than what he eventually did get. So who knows if he would have just turned himself in and did them two and a half, three years or whatever. And then came back home and went hard with the rat. Who knows how that would have went. Or how it would have went if, like I said, if him and Quill would have stayed together. Or him and Nature and Quill would have stayed together. At some point in time, he said all three of them, I mean, was a group. Far as go get us, I mean, or Meek and Meek and Head never went through it, and they was cool. Like, who knows how Head story would have went, man. But overall, I ain't talked to him in a minute. I ain't seen him in a minute. I mean, but that's my guy though. Head hundred percent. Like, outside of rap, like I said, I know him since the early two thousand. Like, man. So, I mean, shout out to Head, you know, man. Like. Maybe one day we'll get it, I mean, get the story or get some new music, I mean, but until then, I mean, we're going to conclude, conclude this episode, uh, and that's what happened to Joy Jahead and where he is now, according to I me, mean, my perspective, my point of view, my interaction with him, and the interview I did with him for the most part, like, it's so much more stuff we could have talked about, because I had story long, he'd been around for so long. He done been, I mean, been through a lot, went through with a lot of people. I mean, he knew a lot of people. A lot of people was around him. I mean, but fast forward, look at D. Jones now. D. Jones still active, still doing this thing. He was running around with Davies. I mean, signed with Kiss, running around with Kiss. I mean, he been touring, moving around, shaking and all that. And that's another thing, too. Um, Davies connected with... Had Andy Jones through their homie Freaky, who, who they know, I mean, from Philly. He went to school with Davies. He played ball and all that. You know, Davies used to play ball, and they was on the same ball team. So, Freaky and, and Freaky Jones and Hattie was tight. 
And then Freaky was tight with Davies. So Davies would come down Philly, down north with Freaky and be around head and D Jones and all that. And then Freaky ended up getting killed. And then Jones' relationship, he says, the relationship with Davies became tighter. I mean, because they all was cool. Bands though Head was locked up when Head came home. I don't know if he, I know he's still cool with East and they still got a relationship, but Head ain't never, I mean, take the opportunity with East the way D Jones did. Like, can you imagine if Head could have got back in the mix with D, I mean, with Davies, you know what I mean, with the music? Like, I mean, because Davies fuck with them, like I said, through Freaky. Like, so Davies still come down north sometimes and be around Freaky folks with D Jones. Like, so Head had that opportunity too, you know what I mean? Like, and I don't know why. He ain't press go on it. Like, that's something we're going to have to get an answer from you. I mean, but until next time, in the meantime, I mean, stay tuned to the next episode. I mean, tune in the past episodes. Appreciate y'all tapping in. I mean, shout out to everybody that been supporting. And make sure y'all keep supporting. Stay tuned. We signing out. Philly Fame TV. We out here.